All right. Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Discover Llama Index series here on the Llama Index YouTube channel. My name is Sarb and today I'll be talking to you about the newly introduced JSON Query Engine. So what are we solving for? JSON, as you may know, is a very popular data format, but it can be quite long which means that the current approaches for querying over that data within the context of, a lot of an LLM can leave a lot to be desired for. However, we know that JSON has a inherent tree structure, so that leads us to ask the question, what if we could show our model how this tree is structured in order to extract information from it? This is where we can make use of something like JSON schema. Uh, JSON schema is a standardized and popular way of describing JSON structure because JSON schema has been around for so long and is quite popular, many LLMs already understand this JSON schema spec. Uh, it's also very easy to create one. You also you may already have a JSON schema to describe your data, or you might be able to create one by hand, or you might be able to, to make use of uh, an LLM chatbot like ChatGPT to generate a JSON schema for you after having given it some sample JSON that conforms to that JSON schema. So let's actually go over how our JSON query engine works at a high level. Um, so you see that we're giving the JSON query engine here three inputs. We're giving it a JSON value, which is simply the JSON data that you want to be able to ask questions about. And then we're also giving a JSON schema, which is simply describes the tree structure that the JSON value conforms to. Uh, and then we're also giving the user question, which is just what the end user wants to know about the JSON data. Uh, our JSON query engine then takes these inputs and then outputs a JSON path query. A uh, JSON path is essentially a structured and well-defined query language to run and execute queries over JSON data. Um, since we get that query that we can execute on JSON values, from the output of this of our engine internally, uh, we can then execute it on our JSON value to get a specific subset of data that answers the user's question. Um, we then take that subset of data to then synthesize the response and get an extracted answer for the user's question. So what does this mean in practice? Let's actually see some of the code and see how it's done. So here I have a really basic uh, Python notebook where I've set up some code for us to go over. Um, start off just some basic uh, code setup. We're reading in our JSON value data and our JSON schema. Uh, let's take a look at some of the sample data that we're going to be playing with today. Uh, this is just supposed to emulate the data for a basic blog posting website where we have a series of blog posts. They have a title and a content and we have a series of comments with things like the comment content, a username, and a blog post ID to relate each comment to the blog post that it's a comment for. Um, now that we have our JSON data and our JSON schema, we can construct our query engine by calling the constructor with those JSON value and JSON schema parameters and also passing in a service context so that we can specify which LLM model we're going to be using, uh, which today is going to be OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo. Uh, once we've constructed that, we now are ready to start answer, uh, qu asking questions about our uh, JSON data. Uh, so the first question I've asked here is how many comments are there on blog post 2? And we get a response back saying there are two comments on blog post 2. If we just take a look at our JSON real quick, we can see that that is in fact true. Uh, there are only two comments in this entire J comments array with blog post ID of 2. So let's actually ask a different question now. Um, Instead of asking about how many comments there are on blog post 2, let's ask what has Jerry been commenting? And let's run that. It'll take a few seconds. Um, but now we see, uh, we get a response back saying Jerry has been commenting nice post. Taking a look at the sample data.json, we can see Jerry did in fact have a comment there uh, saying nice post, and that was his only comment in this comments array. Um, Let's take a look at the uh, JSON path query that was output. And we can see here that we're actually, when we're actually filtering for a username, we're filtering by Jerry with a lowercase j, even though the question had Jerry with a uppercase j. Um, and that brings up a point where it's, where uh, I'd like to stress the importance of 
the descriptions in your JSON schema. So taking a look at our JSON schema now, we can see uh, you know we're defining the various properties on our uh, JSON structure. Uh, we're looking at the common structure and then the username structure itself. And we can see that we can provide a description for each of the attributes in our JSON. Um, so the description for our username attribute says username of the commenter lowercase. So by feeding in this information, this description uh, about the username saying that all usernames are lowercase, our LLM model will know that anytime that we're uh, doing a comparison against the username attribute inside of our JSON, uh, that value needs to be a, a, a lowercase value uh, for it to get any matches against that username uh, attribute. Uh, so just to stress again that uh, it's really important that your JSON schema is as descriptive as it can be. So to wrap things up, uh, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully that was useful. Um, feel free to follow us on Twitter for the latest updates on the Llama Index uh, project. Uh, also definitely uh, feel free to star us on our GitHub project as well and feel free to contribute. Um, and finally, please do like and subscribe uh, us here on YouTube as we'll be putting out more content like what you're seeing here. Um, and that is all. Uh, hope you have a great day.